right, thank you everybody. I'm uh, Katherine Barnard. I am Scott's uh, PhD student, Portland State University. Um, and I'm going to talk about the actual like chemistry and give you some more descriptions of those specific soils that Scott just went over. Um, so my dissertation was called The Terroir of Pinot Noir. It's a broad analysis of vineyard soils, grape juice, and wine chemistry in the Willamette Valley. The purpose of my dissertation was to determine the differences between these parent materials. So I'll talk a little bit more about the actual geology and the soil properties. Um, we did this with field descriptions, um, particle size, structure, consistence, depth. We did um, organic matter and the level of soil profile development with the horizons, which one of the speakers was sp um, talking about earlier. Um, we also did a lot of chemical characteristics with pH, cation exchange capacity, and um, we analyzed for all macronutrients, micronutrients, and trace elements, as um, Scott uh, mentioned, published from uh, uh, White. Um, we also did clay mineralogy um, analysis to look at soil development and clays. And then we also looked at these piezolites, which he has a, uh, Scott has a jar of. Um, we also ran some Pinot Noir grape juice um, for looking for if we could tra track the chemistry from the soil into the grape juice and then also into the wine. Um, so this is actually unpublished from quite a few years ago from uh, Ray Wells. Um, so he has an updated map downstairs. Um, but again, the AVAs are outlined by the different geological units. Um, none of my sites were in the lower elevations, less than 300 um, feet um, in the Missoula flood deposits. Um, and those be that was because those are de um, deposited about 15,000 years ago, and those are our younger soils. Um, in the Shehala Mountains, um, we had a basalt bedrock but with ancient lust blown up on top of that. And all of the reds are the basalt, so Dundee Hills, also basalt bedrock. And the greens and blues um, and reds here, oranges, are the uh, marine sediments. And so that is how we basically separated the um, different study sites. Um, you just saw this. This is the same chart that Scott and his previous master's student um, published, um, looking at the main three soil series, or the Jory, Willa, Kenzie, and Laurel Wood. But then what I wanted to do is separate um, our vineyard sites based on the parent material. So we'll be looking mostly just at the differences between basalt parent material, marine sediment parent material, and then the basalt with the less um, parent material. Um, now, uh, these three general soil series, the Jory, Willa, Kenzie, and Laurelwood, have been separated into a lot more different names, and so it makes it a lot harder to um, just look at a soil map and say what you have. You have to go out and you have to dig a hole and see what kind of soil you have at your site, and I think we all know that. Um, so my participating wineries in the study included um, Elk Cove. We sampled um, soils from the three main uh, parent materials, the volcanic or the basalt, um, the marine sediments, and the lust and volcanic parent material. Uh, I also worked with Willa Kenzie Estate, um, and instead of the less volcanic, we looked at um, Terrebas, which was um, on a unique um, vineyard. Um, the Shehalem cellars, uh, Shehalem, we looked at Stoller, Ridgecrest, and Corral Creek, so the main three parent materials. Um, at Lang, we also looked at the volcanic, but then two vineyards in marine sediments, one from the Yamhill um, AVA, but then one from Freedom Hill Vineyard, which is closer to this location down here in Monmouth, Oregon, uh, but also still marine sediment parent material. Um, Rex Hill we worked with, and we did a volcanic, um, the Luss, and then we did two vineyards um, that were inside the Shehala Mountain AVA, but they're on an ancient landslide deposit, so they're kind of like unique and a little bit outlier um, in our data set. And then we worked again with Ken Wright, two um, marine sediment, one up here and one down in Monmouth. Um, and we had a one Meredith Mitchell vineyard in the McMinnville area here. So here's a map of where those locations are um, on a, a very generalized GIS uh, geography or geology map. Um, so here we, here's the two at Freedom Hill and marine sediments. Here's the one that's um, in 
uh, Meredith Mitchell and McMinnville, and then the rest of our sites Yamhill Carlton on marine sediments and the Ribbon Ridge on marine sediments. This is our two land, uh, landslide deposits. These are our volcanic and lust sites, just three of them turns out. And then these are my Dundil, Dundee Hills that are on volcanic. So we did field descriptions, these six different wineries and 20 different vineyards. Um, hand digging the uh, soil pits. Um, Scott did most of that. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't let me dig. Um, <laughs> and then we used the auger to get until refusal or about two meters and then kind of stopped. I did a lot of lab analysis as you can see and we sent out all these samples to get chemistry, x-ray fluorescence of the piezolites. Um, clay mineralogy was done by Reed uh, Glassman etc, etc. Et Limitations of our study was that we did these six uh, wineries over two different vintages um, and so 2011 and 2012 um, the elevation was is geology dependent and we had some variation there. We did try to keep all of our aspect at south facing. Um, we did all Pinot Noir but 11 out of 20 of the vineyards were Pomard. The rest were uh, uh, majority of them were Dijon seven or no, they were Dijon seven seven seven. Um, eight out of twenty had the same uh, were own rooted, so there's no rootstock used. Um, tried to control for trellis type and row direction, but that wasn't possible. Farming techniques, a lot of them are biodynamic and organic vineyards, um, and but then again, can't really control for vineyard management and winemaking techniques. So in the end, we really wanted to look at one winery, one winemaker, and then the three different soils and see what kind of chemical differences we had um, between the vineyards. A little bit of a graphic representation of the climate. Um, from Newburgh, so it's like it's not accurate at all for each one of those vineyards, but you can kind of see that um, the 2012 vintage was just a little bit warmer in growing degree days. Um, and this uh, possibly affected some of the different chemical uptake um, for a couple of the elements. So a closer look at some of the soil types, so if you want to see what they look like. Um, the first two pictures I'll show you on the next slide um, are from the Dundee Hills, um, the Mia Vineyard, and the Sims Vineyard. And so these are the volcanic um, soils. Uh, really awesome, nice, big dirt pictures. Um, just for you guys. Uh, <laughs> picture of the vineyard. Um, we hand dug and um, delineated all of our horizons. Um, and then this is the augering until we either reached refusal or um, just the, the length of the auger. Um, and so yeah, this one didn't ever reach refusal. More than two meters of this dark red soil. Um, and you can kind of see there's an interesting texture here in the A, uh, B horizon between 20 and 50 centimeters. I'm going to get back to that in just a second. Um, another nice picture of the um, vineyard here. Again, dark red soils. Um, more than a meter um, deep and um, clay, nice uh, solid structure there. Um, and then we'll look at some marine sediments, very different. Um, first, Elliot and Ridgecrest, which are here. Um, we have a, more brown colors, le uh, less iron, a lot less red color, but still pretty developed. Again, we have. Um, Friable sandstone is the marine parent material, and so we could just auger and auger and auger and auger in depth, and we're assuming that that means the roots are able to penetrate very easily into that sediment as well, even though that is the like, slightly weathered parent material. Um, so again, over two meters of friable material, but the actual soil, as you can see, ends at about a meter. Um, we get into the sea horizon. Um, again, uh, another sandstone, just slightly different in color, um, but over um, a meter and a half in depth. So pretty deep soils. Um, the other two uh, um, marine sediment samples I want to look at are um, the Spencer Cowlitz, Cowlitz uh, sandstone, and you can see these are much more yellow in color. Again, we get into sea horizon at about a meter, um, 
And so soils are just about a meter, but then also sandstone is very friable, and so those roots could be penetrating two meters or deeper um, for those uh, samples. Now, the Fire Mountain and the Corral Creek vineyards are in the Chehala Mountain AVA, and these are our volcanic bedrock, which is why it's pink colored, but the ancient lust, which is wind blown up onto these mountainsides, it's not mapped. It's a unit, it's like unmapped. And so it looks like it'd be the same as Dundee Hills, but we know because of the change in texture and color that we have this addition of windblown lus, um, ancient lus, it's weathered. Um, and we also have this interesting texture that you can kind of see in the AP and in the BT horizon. It's a little, looks like um, it's bit like pockmarked um, with like buckshot um, or little dimples. Um, and so what's interesting is that we knew going into this that this less soil was producing these piezolites. And I'll go make you remind, remind you of the previous slide of the Dundee Hills, the, the volcanic soil also had that texture. And this is one thing that we found out in my research was that both the Chehala Mountains and some vineyards within the Dundee Mountains have piezolites. We didn't know that before. So we found, I found that. Um, <laughs> so conclusions about uh, all of the analysis that we did on these vineyards. Um, everybody hates t tables, but the results of the high clay content in all of the soils, the red, dark brown, orange colors, um, the textures that are like silt loam, silty clay loam, um, and some pretty good depth of soils. Um, low soil acidity, so we're talking about pHs of five, five and a half. Um, all of these indicate that we have old soils, and that's what Scott kind of preluded to earlier, is that we are growing our vineyards on older soils because they're going to have less nutrients and then therefore less vigor and better wine quality in the end. Um, Scott did mention, you know, how old these soils could be, but in general, based on the red colors and the clay content, these are at least 50,000-year-old soils. They're untouched by the, the last geological event, which was the Missoula flood deposits that happened 15,000 years ago. Um, and then the last thing here on this table is that all of my volcanic soils had some piezolites in them, these little concretions that develop in the soil pedogenically, um, and all of my uh, less soils had piezolites where none of the marine sediments have piezolites. They have quartz and like lots of my muscovite mica instead. Um, so what are these piezolites? We did uh, x-ray fluorescence on those. Um, what we find is that, um, I have to not look up there, making me dizzy. Um, <laughs> Um, we're, we're, what we're saying is that these are found in soils that have a less component and a study from prior research in the pre-Prioria sediments in the lower Mississippi is the first place that these things are described. So these things form in less, in old less. So they're not in the marine sediments, but they are in both the volcanic and the less volcanic um, uh, soils that were in my study and therefore were then assuming that the volcanic soils have a little bit of a less uh, component in some parts of those mountains. Um, these from the x-ray fluorescence, we're, they're like quartz or feldspar grains that then are encircled with clay, um, iron oxide, manganese oxide, um, rings. So most of them are, have, are concentric circles. You can cut them in half and they're like, they're obviously growing. Um, they're formed in place because they have similar mineralogy to the soil that is surrounding them. Um, and it, the chemistry of the piezolite mimics the chemistry of the soil. So all volcanic piezolites from Lang Estate, Mia North Block um, had higher aluminum, iron, and manganese. And the Elk Cove uh, Five Mountain um, site has higher magnesium, calcium, uh, sodium, potassium. 
Um, trace elements were also slightly different. I'm going to skip over clay mineralogy, get to the soil chemistry. Um, using a principal component analysis, can find that we can separate the soil chemistry um, based on geology with the less volcanic vineyards landing somewhere in between the marine sediments and the volcanic um, soils. So these are the volcanic soils kind of spread out, but over at this side, um, uh, using, this is all, um, all soil chemistry data that I had with the 26 different elements. Um, and marine sediments here, uh, the Rex Hill, Jacob Hart, that was my landslide, so they're kind of outliers. And Ter Boss was an outlier. Um, and I had to take out Meredith Mitchell because it was a really big outlier um, and uh, really didn't help my data at all. Um, so. The soils can be distinguished by testing um, the main conclusion here. Um, vanadium and manganese, higher in volcanic. Magnesium, potassium in, low, in less soils. And strontium is the indicator that we have marine sediment. And it's kind of also high in that less. And that's how the less soils are similar to marine sediments and they're similar to volcanic sediments. Um, Basically, we can track the strontium into the grape juice um, from vines grown on marine sediments um, and to compare to volcanic and less parent material. Uh, manganese is higher in the juice and the wine from grapes grown on the volcanic parent material. Um, a lot of other elements, they do not maintain their relative concentrations. This is one thing that we found. Um, to, we can't really trace a lot of them from soil to grape juice to the wine. Um, but it does show that there are some chemical differences between the parrot materials. Um, it's inconclusive for the grape juice chemistry at this time. So lots of future work needs to be done. And I want to thank Scott, my advisor. No, go back. Go back. Um, Portland State University ERAS Family Foundation for my research grant and lab payment. I was a fellow and that paid me. I got a lot of other scholarships and I had a lot of help over the years. So thank you.